Facebook, what's going on? Uh, Chef Chris Hill here. Um, this is a hard video, a hard Q&A to do. Um, I haven't done one of these in quite a while, so we'll kind of work through it together. Uh, but here we are in the kind of early stages of the um, coronavirus outbreak and the impact it's had thus far on the restaurant industry has been catastrophic. Um, I have a few numbers that I'll talk about here in a second as people are getting on. Um, I also want to talk about you know, some things we can do right now to uh, help uh, minimize the impact uh, and kind of hopefully weather the storm. And then on the other side of that, um, what can we do moving forward with our staffs and, and keeping everybody engaged and excited um, in times when uh, leadership is paramount. So um, the first thing, I, I wrote some numbers down so I wouldn't get anything wrong. Um, the, a lot of these numbers I got from the, rest, the National Restaurant Association, um, as well as there's a really good podcast out there uh, from Paul Barron um, of Foodable um, TV. Um, he has a, a podcast out there called um, The Barron Report, B-A-R-R-O-N Report. Um, so some of these are from him. But uh, basically around uh, for, the, for the year, the restaurant industry uh, food service is around $900 billion. Now, um, of that $900 billion, the projections from the NRA, they're saying that um, the impact will be probably around 230 uh, billion um, decrease because of this whole uh, coronavirus. That means that's around 25% of the uh, of the entire year uh, of sales for, for restaurants. So that's a scary number. You think uh, that's basically three months of restaurants not operating at all. Um, we'll see what happens. Hopefully we can get back on our feet faster than, than uh, sooner than later. Um, if you look at the, the number of employees uh, the workforce in the U.S. is around 160 million. Uh, the restaurant industry is right around 10% of that, uh, with about 15 million. Uh, we're thinking that that will probably drop uh, in half, at least in the short term. Another scary proposition. What's going to happen to all these people that don't have jobs? Uh, I know Danny Meyer up at Union Square Hospitality Group. Uh, he laid off temporarily 2,000 um, employees, which is 80% of his entire workforce. So. Um, the more scary numbers. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them uh, here in the comments. Y'all, I'll get to them uh, when I can. Um, and so, um, and then finally, last year there was around eighty. I think it was eighty-six thousand closures for the entire year of restaurants. Uh, the Baron Report and uh, Paul Baron they're projecting that that number will probably. Um, get eclipsed around the same time um, as the beginning of the summer. So the next couple months, we'll probably have the same uh, drop uh, in closures in restaurants. Um, so what, what do we do? Uh, first of all, this is uncharted territories. No one's ever dealt with anything like this before. I heard I listened to another podcast from the NRA called Restaurant Business, and someone was talking about how how things were in Manhattan right after 9-11, uh, and even then, things were not like this. Um, and I think that the biggest thing is that this is you know, nationwide right now, and, and we, don't kind of, we don't really know uh, when uh, the end is in sight. So trying to kind of navigate this is really hard. Um, we're putting a lot of positions where we don't know what to do next. We're trying to figure things out um, in an in a environment where we've never dealt with it before. Uh, so, you know, a lot of restaurants are trying to move towards delivery um, and or pickup, um, which is is great for certain restaurants, but you have a, a, an experience type restaurant and it's not really the same kind of um, vibe if you come pick it up, right? But at the same time, people are going to try to support the, the businesses they love and, and the businesses they really uh, care about. So um, I think definitely trying to focus uh, in the meantime on Keeping work for your staff, uh, however that might be, uh, using them in, in other ways. So as delivery drivers, as um, people that are getting the, the orders ready, if you're not a typical um, delivery or, or takeout type of place, um, some restaurants are trying to focus on you know, Grubhub and, and uh, Uber Eats and things like that. I think customers would rather see uh, employees within the, the business itself take care of it, especially because you don't want a third party 
uh, touching the food you know, in a time like this when things are kind of uh, iffy. So that's one thing you can do. Um, I've seen uh, certain chefs out there are offering gift cards. So offering gift cards for people that are um, gift cards for uh, people that um, will use them down the road. So maybe you offer a hundred dollar gift card and you get 125 or 150 dollars. Uh, so some sort of incentive uh, for them to come in later on. Uh, that generates some sales in the meantime. Uh, something else you can do, which I thought of in the last uh, couple of minutes driving home, was um, as well two things. One being um, encourage your holiday parties, so like the companies that do holiday parties at your place, to go ahead and book now and put their deposits down now. Now I know a lot of restaurants uh, or a lot of companies, even outside of restaurants, are struggling too. But if they can, and you can get them to um, go ahead and commit and leave some sort of deposit now, that's the way to generate some sales. Um, the, the biggest thing is the cash flow issue, right? Getting enough cash flow through to pay the bills, to be able to take care of people uh, until we figure everything out. And then the final thing I have, and I'd love to hear some of y'all's thoughts too, uh, some of y'all in the industry, um, leave them in the comments, leave your, your thoughts, leave your comments, uh, leave your suggestions, uh, things you've heard, of people, things that people are doing. Uh, finally, the, the final thing is, um, so we've all probably been to like a gala or like a party where they're auctioning things off. Um, a lot of times I'll uh, auction a dinner off where I'll go into someone's house and, and cook, uh, you know, a, a five, five course meal for you know, eight people with wine pairing or something like that. You could offer the same type of auction type thing, uh, through, um, through your restaurant, um, at a later date once, uh, things kind of settle down. Um, you can get you know some high dollar amounts for for, for dinners, um, so that's another kind of way you can you can try to leverage uh, this kind of crazy opportunity um, that might potentially be out there. Now, um, <sighs> things are scary. Um, how do we go forward? How do we uh, keep our staffs engaged when first of all a lot of people are having to get rid of their staffs, uh, drop them down to. Uh, to, you know, a couple employees and, and kind of like Danny Meyer did where he reduced his staff by 80%. Then once uh, things get better, he'll hire them back almost as if they were full-time the whole uh, the whole time. Uh, so um, the fortunate thing is there, it sounds like there is going to be some legislation. The, the National Restaurant Association has been working with the government to um, get some stimulus for restaurants um, in addition to, I think, those like the personal stimulus checks that I think... A lot of us will hopefully get to. Um, and also, I would love for you all to share this with some of your people um, in the industry. Uh, maybe tag them here in the comments or share it on your page, uh, whatever that might be. Oh, another thing too. I um, Since you guys are here watching, uh, one of the things I wanted to um, offer you all is, um, I'm going to leave it here in the comments. Um, I have all a, a link to all my books uh, that I've written. So Making the Cut um crush your career and then a couple other kind of smaller books uh for free so if you're at home bored you can't work you can't really go out um you can uh follow this link after what i'm talking here and um get a um a free copy of, of any of my books so um so i so how we move forward uh the first thing i think to do is is to keep your staff engaged you know this is a time when it's easy for morale to go out the out the um, out the out the door, and this is when I think we, as people in charge, as leaders, as as chefs, as kitchen managers, as people that are that are kind of driving the boat, we need to to um, try and direct the boat where it's going to go. And even if we don't know where it's going to go um, in the long term or in the short term, um, I think adversity is one of the one of the things that really defines someone, how they handle it, how they deal with it. And it doesn't mean you have to have all the answers, but I think it does mean that you have to step up and, and try to um, bring people together uh, in a way that's gonna help unite the, uh, the organization as a whole. Um, so one way you can kind of help keep your staff engaged is find, um, find ways for them to um, play around with, with ingredients at home. Uh, maybe have everybody over the next two weeks, uh, come up with some, some specials that we can run at the restaurant when we come back. Um, or start thinking about designing the new uh, summer menu, or I hate to say this, but fall menu. Um, 
that way they uh, stay on top of things and they don't get um, they don't get uh, you know rust from from not um, thinking about uh, engaging with the work. Um, I would definitely also you know, hop on um, if you use like a Slack or something like that. Hop on one of those those um, apps and just constantly communicate with people. Uh, maybe you have a, a Facebook group that you could start if everybody's on Facebook and just kind of check in and, and uh, make sure that everybody's doing okay and, and see how you can help. Um, so, and, th and then um, moving forward, um, it's going to be, uh, we're going to feel the, the impact of this whole coronavirus for a long time. Um, I think uh, it's going to really hurt uh, a lot of us. So I think we as an industry, uh, it's a gut check. You know, what's going to happen, we don't know. Um, and the unknown is one of the scary things, but it's an opportunity to come together. It's, you know, I, th I think at the end of the day, we we do this because we love taking care of people. We love making people happy um, and bringing people together. And unfortunately, we're in a in a climate where we can't really bring people together. Uh, with but with that being said, um, it is an opportunity to try to um, move things forward in a, in a positive way. Um, I also think if we're the people in charge. It's an opportunity, especially for independent restaurants. If we are not, um, if we don't have a really good uh, paid time off plan, if we don't have a really good um, bonus structure for, for our staffs, maybe it's time right now to think about how we could uh, create something like that, where we can get medical benefits, where we can get some sort of um, um, profit sharing, um, or, um, even just, you know, paid time off. A lot of restaurants don't even have paid time off. So offering things like that can be really helpful. So maybe it's a time to think, think about those things. Um, find ways to be better leaders, you know, read books and hop on YouTube. There's some great podcasts out there. Um, I'm going to try and do some more of these at least, you know, a couple of weeks over the next couple of weeks to keep everybody engaged and excited and, and moving forward, even though things are kind of at a standstill right now. Um, I do want to get to a few of y'all's questions, but uh, for those of y'all who are getting here late, um, just talking about the impact uh, this whole coronavirus is having on the industry, um, pretty much across the country. Um, I assume for, for those of you that are uh, overseas, across the world, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. If you, I know I got a bunch of uh, you guys that are in the Philippines and India and, and the UK and, and um, in Europe and Australia, I'd love to hear kind of what your thoughts are. Um, with, th with the way things are going, if y'all are having to shut down like a lot of us in the U.S. Um, I know here in Virginia, I was talking to some some cooks at a restaurant uh, just up the road here, and they were saying that the health inspector is out, and basically you can't have more than 10 patrons in your restaurant at, at a time right now. Some uh, police officers walked in to three or four different restaurants, saw that uh, the, the people there were not... Um, abiding by the uh, the rules of 10 people or less, and they called the health department, which usually the health department, they're done by five o'clock. Uh, at least I've never seen them past then. And uh, the health department walks up and shuts them down instantly until this whole mess has been uh, resolved. Um, so it's it's scary. And um, you know people are just trying to do the best they can to get by. Um, but some of those things I said before of like, of uh, you know, focusing on creating new revenue streams. That's the key is getting some revenue in to uh, keep some cash flow coming in so you can take care of, of, of things. I can tell you when I had my restaurant, you know, uh, we'd, a bad snowstorm would come in and we're not used to the snow here in Virginia, but um, you know, f we'd be closed for five days and some, at, the wrong, at the wrong time of month, you know, 28th of the month, you have payroll, you have, uh, you have uh, rent due, uh, you had just had to pay your meals taxes, uh, so you're, the tax on your food, and you had no revenue coming in. So I can I understand what it's like, um, obviously not to this degree, but uh, the challenges are real. So I understand, um, and the key is just getting some cash flow and revenue coming through. Um, but like I said before, I think the way you handle adversity defines you. Um, I can tell you. The diversity, I, the adversity I've been through is kind of what's got me to, to where I am today. Um, all right, so some of these, uh, all right, so Chris, we got you in San Antonio, Matt and uh, Bama, roll tie buddy, Tyler, Kalista, buddy, man. I saw that the uh, casino is closing um, f until further notice. I'm sure that's killing the uh, you guys out there, man. Um, Glenn Gilbert said he had to let 12 of his 18 cooks go. Um, it's rough, man. Um, 
you had Matthew Donovan, um, you had 350 nightly covers to 25 um, all day. Um, if y'all have any questions, um, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Um, just leave them in the comments below. Um, Luke and Shannon Nelson, we mainly care weddings and do large events with our food trailer. Um, events are canceling left and right. Yeah, um, I'm, sh I'm sure carriers are getting hit hard too, right? You're depending on, on functions where you have a lot of people together. Um, and unfortunately, those things aren't happening right now. So what do you do? Uh, maybe you try and drum up some new business for the future. Um, let's see, uh, Paul Wesselman, what's up, buddy? Um, yeah, I think you're exactly right, man. He says, you know, we have to overcome the adversity as an individual first. Uh, it's a good example for the community. And then I think actions definitely um, lead the way to, um, to uh, hope and all that kind of stuff. Um, Amber said her place just closed. That sucks. Um, it's, uh, it's been, uh, it's been really, really, um, challenging for a lot of people. Um, I know, I know, um, just from, from hearing and seeing, you know, all the chefs I follow on Instagram, you know, they're all putting heartbreak, heartbreaking, um, messages and comments and, and photos out there saying, Hey, this is the last thing we want to do, but, uh, we feel like it's the right thing to do right now. And, um, you have whole restaurant groups that are closing down, um, at least in the, uh, the short term. Um, and so a time like this also kind of reminds me of, uh, the very first article that I think a lot of y'all have probably read, um, of the first article of mine that went viral, um, called Dear Chefs and just the very end of it. So it says, show up every day, looking to make the most of it, learn from the best, seek to be the best. And once you're on your way, teach others to be the best. This life won't be easy. It'll be damn hard. But in the end, you will have lived a life of which you are proud when it's yours and doing so you get to make the world taste a bit better in the process. So what can you do today to show up and, and um, make the most of it? How can you move forward um, in a way that's going to benefit you in the future? You know, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about like right now is a great time to get into the stock market because you know the stocks are lower and you can buy low and, and you know sell high quote unquote. Well, the same thing with with uh, our industry, our industry and our, our careers. If you focus on getting better in the next thirty days versus you know other friends are going out getting drunk and doing dumb things, maybe you can uh, have a leg up when you come back. Um, how much can you learn over the next 30 days about management and about creating new recipes and inventory and um, whatever you're passionate about in the, in the industry? What can you find at the, at the farmer's market, maybe not the farmer's market, but maybe at the grocery store to cook that, um, that you've never worked with before? What kind of new ingredients can you get familiarized with? What flavors can you uh, start to try to master? What, uh, what cuisines have you always been curious about that you've never really you know, delved into before? All these things are opportunities. Um, yes, it's not the opportunities that we were hoping for, um, but it's the way things are. And uh, I've always said, and you know, my mom, when, before she passed away, always told me, you know, focus on the things that you can control. And that's you know, the way you show up and the attitude you have uh, and the energy and the, and the um, enthusiasm you put into it. So, um, you know, how are you going to show up? What, what are you going to do to uh, make things better versus, um, versus the opposite? Um, so, yeah. Um, here's a here's a couple uh, a couple questions. Um, yeah, Tony Riley says to go curbside and third party delivery is the only immediate survival plan at this point. Yeah, I think that's. I mean. To get revenue in right this second, yeah. Um, like I said before, if anyone wasn't here kind of when I started talking, I think you could also try and do gift cards for the future. So you buy $100, you'll get $150. Um, I think you can also try to um, book holiday parties now. Um, you know, instead of having them wait until the summer or the fall, um, encourage company because most of these are companies that usually have at least a little bit of income they can play around with. Uh, if you can get some deposits on, on holiday parties, that, that could be huge. And then the other thing I think is if you were to create some kind of interesting auction items that you could auction off on, uh, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, even on, um, one of like the 
Kickstarter type things where you um, give people incentives for uh, spending, you know, if someone buys a, a, a eight course dinner that you'll, that you'll give them over, uh, over the summer sometime uh, that's in their house with you and your, and, or maybe your sous chef and you have wine pairings and it's an amazing menu. Um, you know, that's, I mean, the, the auctions that I give away, I think the last one I gave away for uh, this charity here in Virginia called the Eliza Hope Foundation is um, I think I think it raised three grand, um, and yeah, I'm not doing. I mean, I'm doing some cool, interesting uh, dishes, but n nothing crazy. Um, so that could be a, a way to uh, get you know one night's worth of revenue um, that you'll fulfill uh, the obligation for later on. Uh, but definitely uh, to go and definitely delivery. Um, I would definitely try to utilize your employees versus outsourcing it to one of the third parties. <clears throat> um, Amanda Jobin, pretty much everything in Canada is takeout only, but our government is stepping up billions in relief. No one, no one will be without. Yeah, and that's how it's going to be here in the U.S. too, Amanda. I think the only concern is how fast is that going to happen? How fast is, is relief, relief going to come? Now, I think a lot of um, you know, landlords, I think a lot of um, people are understanding about, about um, the situation we're in and are, are, are being a little bit forgiving, but at the same time, People need money to live, right? Um, uh, Sherry, you're, oh, you're kosher catered. Uh, very cool. Um, yeah, hope, hopefully you can get some deliveries going. You could also do some um, prepared meals. Um, you could even have, do some prepared meals and try, try and create some videos to go along with them. That'd be pretty cool, I think. Um, Nick, Nick, what's up, buddy? I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, buddy. Um, Chef, you mentioned about possibly setting up a paid time off plan or something of that sort to support employees. With rep restaurants operating on such small margins, how would you propose doing this? How would you set one up? Uh, percentage of revenue into an interest-bearing fund? Yeah, I think that's exactly the thing to do, Nick, is uh, figure out um, what your margins are. Figure out um, maybe maybe you take, uh, let's see, if you have, say you do uh, this to make it even a uh, million dollars in sales, um, 1% of that is what, uh, 10,000? 10, 10,000? 10, no, uh, yeah, 10,000. So 1% 10, is 10,000. So maybe you take, try to take 2% of your, of your sales, um, of your net sales. So, um, after you take taxes out and everything, because that's what you're, what you're going to end up with. And, um, and then put that into like a slush where, uh, you're able to set up some sort of fund, um, yeah, to, to take care of these things. Um, I think that's uh, the, the great, the, the, the best possible way to do it. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of people, one of the pieces of advice I always get, give is, um, when you have your restaurant sales come in, um, or sorry, I'm sorry, when your credit card sales come in, uh, you know, from the night, basically your credit card sales will come in today from like two days ago. Uh, when they come in, uh, go ahead and portion out what the taxes are on that. Um, that way, um, like here in, the, in Virginia, we have meals tax, basically the, the food tax we pay to the city. Um, that's due on the 20th of every, every month. Uh, if you put it away as it comes in, it's a lot easier to have it at the end of the month. A lot of times you kind of spend what you have. So I think if you kind of apportion uh, away a little bit at a time, it makes it a lot easier to kind of um, have that at the end of the month. Uh, you're not always scrambling because there's, there's always one more thing you can spend money on in a restaurant, whether it's more more inventory, better products, you know, the, uh, the walk-in goes down, uh, you need a new slicer, um, it could, you know, the list goes on, um, you know, upgrade for front of the house. So if you have at least some small percentage that, that's, uh, that you can, um, pull off the side, I think that can be super, super helpful. Um, and you know, if you run a good, well-run restaurant, you have some decent bar sales, you have decent food sales, uh, food costs around 30% ish, maybe 33 tops. Uh, you can run, you know, a eight to 10%, um, margin. Now that means that, all right, if you sell a million dollars, you as the owner get a hundred thousand dollars, um, plus maybe any salary. If you're actually a managing partner, um, you know, doing work in the business. Um, now 2% of that would be what? 20,000 of your hundred. All right. So if, that helps keep good people around that extra $20,000 out of your pocket. 
Um, so you make 80 grand instead of, of the 100, maybe it's worth it. I would say it probably is um, because we can't, in a lot of ways, afford to pay super high salaries. Uh, you know, a lot of times the hours are long, you have to work, work holidays. Um, there's a lot of challenges as it comes to being able to incentivize employees. So this is one way, like Nick, you said, of you know, pulling off a little bit of money you, um, as it comes in. Um, and that's something that will help keep, keep employees around. That's, I think, the biggest thing that most restaurants are lacking is not being able to uh, you know, take care of employees when they have health issues. Um, so many cooks, I mean, so many Americans in general are, are paying, basically paying for, for themselves. They're trying to go, go to the doctor. And um, you know, maybe that will all change at some point soon. But um, until then, I think that's something that a lot of employees will really, really appreciate. And I think it goes a long way. And at the end of the day, if that keeps good people around, it's going to make your job a lot easier to run a really good restaurant. All right. Um, Raphael, man, how are things over in uh, Utah, buddy? I hope you're doing well. Um, Paul, you said you're uh, closing the doors in Tucson. Sorry, man. Um, Rodney, 23% food costs, man. Good job. What about, what are you selling? Do you have a lot of catering sales? Yeah, I know catering sales tend to have a, um, a higher... Uh, profit margin. So I wonder um, if you may do a lot of, of um, banquet uh, or catering sales. Um, anyone got any questions? Um, I could keep going on probably all night and I will as long as y'all are here and want to hang out. But uh, if you have any questions or ideas or suggestions or things you want to bring up, I'm happy to kind of talk about them. Um, but I think this is the time for us to kind of come together as an industry. And it, I think in some capacity, the industry will definitely be different as we know it. Uh, whether it's uh, restaurants focusing more in the future on these types of, of to-go and delivery sales, um, I'm not really sure. But I know for a fact we're gonna look back in you know 50 years when we're 60 or 70 or 80 years old and um, be able to look back and remember very vividly and specifically this moment in time. Um, it's been really, really wild. Hey, Jerry, how's it going? Hope you're doing well, man. Um, all right, guys. Well, um, again, if you're getting here late, I, I threw a link in here. I'll post it again just uh, so it's easy to find, hopefully. But I have a, a link to my all my books. Uh, you can get them all for free right now. I'm not going to ask anyone to, to, to spend any money on, on that. The goal really is to keep you learning while you're not able to spend as, as much time in the kitchen. Um, so my book, Making the Cut, you know, I got a chance to interview uh, Gavin Kaysen, a uh, great chef uh, who competed in the Boku store. Um, Philip Tessier, who also competed in the Boku store, got uh, silver for the U.S. Um, Fabio Viviani, Dominique Crane, who's the, the number one female chef in the world a couple years ago, the first female chef in the U.S. to get two Michelin stars. Uh, Jeremiah Tower, who was like one of the goats um, of like the 90s, um, and the list goes on. Uh, Frank Stitt, who's the kind of the, the, the king of, of um, Southern cuisine. Um, that book's on there, Crush Your Career, which is kind of a, a guide to branding yourself as a chef in order to um, keep your career moving forward. Um, and that, that uh, and then uh, I, I would also have... Um, the Restaurant Code, which is kind of a fun little book. It's more of like a coffee table book, but it's fun to read as the digital version. You can obviously uh, hop on Amazon and grab a, a, a print version, but um, it's one of those kind of fun flip through books. And um, and then the um, the Chef's Journal, again, that's one of those more, it's better to have like a print version, but it's essentially a, a journal kind of like this. And it's got um, all your chef stuff organized in one place. Uh, so it's got um, templates for recipe development. It's got um, notes. It's got um, your addresses and your names and contacts and uh, a little calendar. Uh, the The goal was, you know, when I was doing a lot of recipe development and I was always running around the kitchen, I could never really um, keep all my shit in the same place. So um, this was a way for me to kind of create something that I wish I had back when I was... Um, a line cook and learning. Um, you know, I always say the best thing you can do as a, a young cook is to walk around with a notepad in your hand and a little bit of curiosity. 
Um, you know, if you write, if you learn something new every single day um, over the course of a year, that's what 300 or so new things you've learned over the course of five years, 1500, you know, over the course of 50 years, that's a lot of new things you've learned. And sometimes it's something big and, and exciting and, and, and mind breaking. And other times it's just, um, you know, a better way to tie your apron. But if you're always learning, if you're always growing, um, if you're always finding ways to use adversity to your advantage, um, to learn more about the industry, about cooking, about yourself and about the people that you're around, um, I think, uh, you'll be better off for it. Um, so let's continue to support each other. Um, um, so Paul Simmons asks, how can we as chefs and cooks poss possibly go in, I think he said possibly go into cooking out of homes. Um, so Paul, are you referring to like going into someone else's home and like cooking a dinner for them? Like maybe like a, a um, like a dinner party? Or do you mean like actually creating um, food, food and dishes uh, like almost like um, meal prep for people that might be buying it. Um, I'm wondering what you kind of where you're going with that. Um, I had a really cool idea that maybe it'll work at some point, but almost kind of like a uh, uh, an Uber or an Airbnb for home cooks. So like if you're in the area, you can. Um, this was a couple years ago, um, but. Um, and we actually ended up talking to some, uh, some investors that kind of fell through, but, uh, basically you, um, if you're in the area, you can pull up the app and you see, oh yeah, there's this, uh, Indian lady who makes the, the best, you know, butter chicken ever. Um, and I can, you know, buy it from her and that's the price. Um, or you love enchiladas and you're in a certain part of town and you see enchiladas are, are available, um, or you're on the way home and you see that, uh, there's, there's some, uh, panna cotta and you love dessert um but you don't want to have to make it and it's too much of a pain in the ass to kind of you know buy it at the store um paul going to other people's homes well I, um i think the biggest thing with that is probably um you know building the trust with with your uh with your customer base um so like building your brand um and it's not something i do a lot i do when i you know auction off dinners and things like that um the easiest way is to obviously use your brand to to leverage and then leverage that brand uh but then also to um maybe start for for cheap or, or maybe start even for for, for free I, this isn't a great um short-term revenue fix but if you start for cheap or for free for some of your friends or for your your parents friends that have high-end um okay so an llc so like you want to start like a, basically like a a private chef or like a private catering uh, gourmet like um, dinner party business yeah you could um so you want to start to develop your brand and all that kind of stuff but then you could um I would start with with doing it for free or for cheap um, for some friends for your family uh, family friends if you have someone you know in the in the uh, community that likes to spend a lot of money on food and wine you know, offer to do it you know for a discount for them bring a nice camera um, if you know someone that does photography that can cook halfway well. They bring them, they can be your, your assistant, they can take pictures, create a website that way. Um, you, the cool thing about the world we live in now is you can start anything, you can really start a business in, in 30 minutes. You can hop on you know whatever uh, government site and buy your, your business license. The downside of that is everybody can do that. So you have to find a way to uh, stand out and be unique and different and I think um, but there's no, no time like the present go ahead and just try and um, get drum up some business um, it's kind of like when I started speaking I, I spoke for free for for a long time um, and I used to go do the TV show all the time for free uh, but that gave me exposure that gave me uh, helped me build my brand so that people kind of started to figure out and know who I was so then when new opportunities came up I could then leverage that and say, well, this is the, this is the fee I'm going to charge. I think you can do the exact same thing when you're, um, when you're, uh, building your business. So, um, good luck with that, man. Um, Jerry, yeah, sales are super down. It's definitely a sad day in our industry, man. Um, I hope you, some of y'all will check out that, uh, the link I shared with you. Um, yeah, I'm not looking to make any money off it. It's, uh, all the books are for free. Um, anyone have any more questions? Um, 
I'm happy to keep answering or any more comments or any thoughts like that. Um, speak now or uh, forever hold your peace, I guess. Um, but really, I'll, um, this is, I'll give a chance for anyone else to, to, to leave a comment or a question, but um, let's stick together. Um, it's going to be hard. It's going to be a tough time in this industry, but I think on the other end, we'll learn a lot about ourselves, uh, the staffs we have. Imagine going through the adversity that we're about to go through um, over the next month or two months or three months, whatever that might look like. And um, you know, you, you think you think that you build the camaraderie uh, through a shift together, you know, working side by side, which you absolutely do. But think about going through that after having gone through something like this together, where you're able to, to weather the storm, get back on the other side, do what you love, do what you love with the people you really care about, that you enjoy cooking with, I think it'll be really, really rewarding on the other side. So um, the opportunity is there, guys. Um, we just have to stay together and um, stick it out together. Um, all right, guys, well, um, y'all uh, take it easy. I'll try and do this again in a couple days. Uh, check in with everybody. I assume Friday night will be a little bit lame, um, unfortunately, because usually I, when I'm, I haven't done one of these in a while, but usually when I'll do a Friday night live stream, you know, it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, everybody's getting out of work and um, it's, you know, spirits are high. And, and now it's going to be one of those situation, situations where people are, um, I don't know, maybe they're working, maybe they're not. Um, so anyway, all right, guys. Love you guys. Thank you all for uh, hanging out. Um, shoot me a message if I can do anything to help you. Um, and uh, we'll get through this together. Cheers, guys.